Hello Flight Simmers, I'm Adam and welcome to P3D and in this video I'm going to show you how you can basically double your autogen trees and buildings in the sim very easily and you don't have to add and install an add-on it's literally a CFG tweak um, that will basically generate twice as many buildings and twice as many trees as you have got and it doesn't rely on the sliders either to uh, to maximize so it doesn't matter what slider position you've got you'll have basically double the amount of buildings and trees in your sim and uh, yeah you'll be loving it <laughs> basically it's very simple, but before we go do this, I want to explain um, a few of the sliders first, just so you get the concepts for what you should be having your slider set at, so you can get the best frame rate from your sim. Um, the sliders in P3D, P Lockheed Martin have done a great job with the sliders or the what you're able to control in the sim. Um, they allow you so much tweaking for getting the best out of your hardware to s have the best frame rate in the sim. Like more than I've seen in most other sims, to be honest. You can control every aspect of the sim to fine tune your hardware so your GPU and your CPU aren't maxed out or strained you know um through through using the sim so in this video i'm going to show you exactly how you can get full tree coverage and full building coverage in the sim with a few tweaks so first off let's go into the menu um and let me show you exactly um what i'm talking about here so the sliders we're going to be talking about are your scenery objects sliders uh, there's scenery complexity, autogen and scenery draw distance, and then there's two for uh, autogen density, one for vegetation and one for building. Now, some of these are extremely easy to understand. Some of them are a bit uh, misleading. The scenery complexity slider um, has various levels from very sparse to extremely dense. Now, this is a global setting which talks about any sim object that's a scenery item, be it within an airport area or outside of an airport area. Typically, um, in P3D, third-party developers, if they create an airport, they are completely in control of what will show up inside the perimeter of the airport they've created. And any settings that they've created within each of the, their models doesn't affect the landscape around and vice versa. The scenery sim settings don't actually change what happens within the airport. It's down to the third party developer. This slider will talk about globally everything if the third party developer has created their add-on correctly. This will basically talk about what type of variation of items will show up in your sim. Uh, they've all got classifications, so you've got like bridges, uh, that's one classification. Masts, that's another classification. Um, trees and buildings, they're separate classifications, but other things as well, like VOR points or, um, you know, points like scenery points of interest, basically. Um, and depending on where you've put this slider is depending on how many classifications will show up. So having it on very sparse, you'll have the bare minimum show up. So you might not see traffic on the road, you might not see bridges, you might not see the masts but you will see other items and the higher you increase this slider the more classifications are being included so obviously the normal setting will give you about 60 to 70 percent of what sh could be shown um, the higher you put this setting it just all it means is that it includes different types of classifications so if you set it extremely dense you're seeing everything that both Lockheed Martin and a third-party developer 
um, wants you to see because if a third party developer has made their airport correctly uh, they'll have assigned certain sim objects to one of these levels so if you move it down you'll remove some and if you move it up you'll start including more and more so technically speaking no matter what gpu or cpu you've got you can set this on its highest setting and it doesn't actually impact your frame rate that much that slider is this one this will impact your load on your hardware this is the autogen and scenery draw distance now it does exactly what it says on the tin in terms of the higher you have this out the further out your draw distance will be um, your draw distance is not the same as your render uh, or your sorry your scenery loading distance so if we go to the the outside top down view of the world and scroll out you'll notice as it starts to load in now to the view as it's rendering to this camera point there is a ring road or a ring circle of uh, detail here now this is what's loading into your sim scenario doesn't matter if you can't see these ones on the edges here um, they might not be rendered into your display but they're loaded as part of your scenery which impacts your hardware for your CPU and your memory um, it doesn't actually load what you can't see on your GPU that it happens when you're actually in the sim looking at something and i can only see out as far as say like a little bit of that water horizon and those buildings over there so i can only see out to the horizon line here whatever is beyond it is still loaded into your sim but it's not loaded into the render of the display yet because i physically can't see it but going back to the top down position it's still loaded in on your hardware so it's still there and makes an impact now the slider setting that we talked about before talks only about what is going to render into your display so this obviously talks about the autogen so every tree every building every landmark everything that is a sim object classified it draws out to your distance according to this slider now that ring circle we talked about is loaded in regardless if the draw distance matches that this extremely high setting will match your perimeter of what's loaded into scenario and as you bring it down it will limit your the draw distance or the render distance of what's going to load into your display typically to be honest the high setting should be the maximum because you physically no matter what plane you're flying at or almost relative to what altitude you're not going to be able to see beyond what this is level is set to anyway so having it set to high is going to fully load everything in when you load in an airport you'll see the terrain surrounding you as you go up into the air still loading in fine um, this is really these extremely high setting is if you're maybe in the Concorde and you want autogen loading in although to be honest the higher up you go the less likely sim objects are going to actually load into the display down below they might not actually load in at all when you're up at 40,000 feet you're not gonna actually physically see trees anyway as a real pilot at that height like individual trees you might see a canopy of trees you might see um, trees you know the tops of them but you're not going to perhaps pick out a telephone box or a single house at 40,000 feet so in all honesty this slider think of it like this the higher up you go the lower this sliding should be and the lower to the ground you are the higher it should be only really up to high um, if you've got a 30 or 40 series card then you can use the very high and extremely high setting but it really doesn't do anything when you're at say 5,000 feet above high because you're physically not going to see those objects because of either the curvature of the earth or mountains or other things that could be in the way so having this set to high is probably your best bet 
if you've got a card that is less than a say a 20 series you're probably going to be wanting low and medium and that still will draw in quite a few now this auto gen and scenery draw distance does not speak about airports it's only about the exterior outside of the airport perimeter for the landscape um, the like I said before the third party developer is in charge of the internal what you're going to load in so even if you had this slider dead and all these sliders dead you still will see trees and buildings within the airport perimeter if the third party developer has added that you still will it still will load in it's just as soon as you leave that perimeter you'll have nothing then okay um, so that's what the scenery draw distance does. Um, now the vegetation and building density sliders are not like draw distance sliders. These actually talk about the variety of buildings and trees within the sim. So globally, there's probably about 30 different variation types of trees in p3d and probably about 40 different types of buildings and if you have the add-on for terraflora trees hd or even buildings hd that can actually increase up to like 50 plus variations now if i was to stick these two sliders on none i wouldn't see any buildings or trees outside of airports because i've told the sim do not show me any buildings or trees if i put this one on sparse it's actually only going to show me about maybe one to four different types of tree variations and building types. Now, these are globally set, not regionally. So some buildings in America don't show in Japan and vice versa because the architecture of the building is different. So if I go to an area where um, the type of building that will load in like isn't in that area, then it's not going to load in anyway. So it doesn't speak about the volume of vegetation and buildings that are loading in. It just talks about the variety in that particular area. So if there's only about four different variety of buildings anyway in that area, you might not actually see them until you've reached the dense stage on these two sliders. Now we've increased it by like two different settings here. Um, it's probably tripled the variety that will show up in the sim so technically you could have these maxed out in order to see every type of variation of tree and every type of building variation that will show up for that particular spot of the world you're in um, and it shouldn't actually impact your hardware that much because yes if you had say an area where there's 10 varieties of buildings you will get the full 10 and if i was to remove this down to sparse you'd probably only get two varieties which means yes less buildings will show in but again it's just the different types of buildings the actual volume of buildings and the volumes of trees are actually set in your cfg file um, these are default set numbers which don't actually change so how many trees how many buildings are not a part of these sliders okay it's actually a part of your cfg which is exactly what i'm going to show you on what you can change so i just wanted to run through these sliders just so you had a better understanding because these will really impact your fps depending on your hardware now we'd all like to have sliders like this where everything is maxed out but you have to have the hardware there to be able to get those sliders to the right. Um, if you don't have the hardware, you have to maintain your sliders in order to regulate your FPS. And of course, if you're in a very high professional aircraft like a PMDG 747 and you're flying in London, then that's a big hit on your hardware and you're going to have to lower some sliders to compensate for that impact. If you're out in the desert <laughs> in a Cessna, then you can have everything ramped up because there's less of an impact there's less loading in you know it's just the sand and the plane and that's it so these sliders really impact your fps but do not impact the volume of trees and buildings that will load in it just talks about the density of variation effectively this density should actually be called variety if anything it's the autogen vegetation variety slider how many different types of trees do you want to see in your sim 
do you want to see like one to three do you want to see like five do you want to see like maybe 10 or 15 or do you want to see the full 30 varieties that will show up in your sim globally same with the buildings okay so the settings that you need to play with basically are these in the scenery section if you scroll down in your cfg which can be found in the app data roaming lockheed martin location scroll down to the scenery section now this draw distance is the draw distance of that slider now this can actually go beyond thirty thousand, which is the maximum setting you can actually have this higher up to like a million if you wanted to but it would be kind of pointless because you would not see out that far but it would draw it into the render the buildings by default this autogen batch load is specifically talking about your buildings and your trees i think as well although it does say autogen vegetation type but this autogen batch load is defaulted to two if you change it to one you will double the amount of buildings you have loading in to your sim by default the other section if we scroll down to so down in the terrain section there's four lines of code here now if you place these four lines of code in right your terrain section you will double the amount of trees you see and not only that it will actually lower slightly the polygon count so you'll get better performance um, it will also increase how big the texture of the landscape size is so you will actually see better quality uh, terrain down below but you will have more buildings and trees batching in right um, into your sim these five lines of code these four here and the the autogen batch lod are all the tweaks you need to make in order to get the full load of trees and buildings in your sim and no matter what slider setting you've got it on you can do this tweak and actually generate more buildings and trees even if you had it on the sparse setting you will double the amount that loads in because it's only talking about how many will load in not the variety which is what the sliders will do the sliders will talk about the variety that loads in but we're changing how many of that variety will load in so doing those simple tweaks you will see a massive difference in your simulator in terms of how many buildings and trees are loading into your sim basically doubling or sometimes tripling them in very dense areas but remember the volume loading in will increase the usage on your gpu and cpu you do need to regulate that your fps may go down and your vram may increase and in version 5 and 6 as a directx 12 application you need to monitor and maintain that for your hardware otherwise it will crash the desktop so that's basically it now all these entries i talked about i'm putting in the description box down below you haven't got to come into my discord to download a file um although i will put that file in my discord if you prefer i know sometimes if you copy and paste from youtube into your cfg file it can actually um, disrupt the coding of that file and it can actually wreck your sim so i will put it into a text file in my discord in the free flight sim assets channel just pop into my discord using the link down below read the rules action what it says and go and get the pilot role to access that channel you'll have the permissions then to access this channel get the code put it in your sim and enjoy the autogen loading into your sim anyway guys thank you so much for watching this i really appreciate all the support i get for p3d i much prefer p3d over any sim don't forget i do run a giveaway every single month on my channel 50 euros of sim market vouchers for flight simulation add-ons um, are up for grabs every single month to be in with a chance to win, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and my YouTube channel. Go and um, put a comment down in any one of my P3D videos. And at the end of every single month, I go live with a vlog and announce the winner. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.